We have been hearing from Sri Bhajan Rahasya, the Sri Bhaktino Thakur, and now we have arrived at chapter 5. During this festival, we had eight 
classes, it was not possible to touch eight chapters. But never mind, already this chapter five is already beyond. Huh? It is already far high level of realization. So we can bow down to this chapter from far away and pray that we can arrive there one day. Chapter 5, Panchamayam Sadhana, Aparan Kaliya Bhajan. It corresponds to the stage in the development of bhakti, Asakti. After Ruchi, Asakti, and before Bhav. So, the mood of the sadhak in this stage has been expressed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his Shikshastakam. In the fifth verse, Ai nanna taruja kinkara Bhagitamam vishame bhavam bhuto Kripaya tava para pankaja Stita duli satyasham vichintaya Ai! This is a, an interjection in Sanskrit. Like in English, before you go some you say, Oh! But there are different types of interjection in Sanskrit. Ai is used as an expression of tenderness. So with a very tender feeling. Ai nanda tanuja. You see, in previous verses, like the second verse, Eta Trishi Tavakripa Bhagavan. The Lord is addressed as Bhagavan. Even in the previous verse, Jagadisha Kamaye, the Lord of the universe. But now, Nanda Tanuja, Krishna is addressed with a sweet Lokik Sadvandu Bhatsambandha. His natural relationship. Ayinanda Tanuja, O son of Nanda Maharaj. King Karam, Mom, I am your servant. The devotee is having some realization of the divine realm. And the abhas, a semblance of the re realization of his Siddha Sarupa has come. So, now he knows, oh, this is me. But, he is coming out from his deep meditation and saying, what am I doing here? In this Vishamei Bhavam Buddha, in this terrible, frightening material, ocean of material existence, I have fallen here. Alas, alas. Kripaya, O son of Nandamaraj, be merciful to me. Tavapada Pankaja Stita Dhuli Sadrasham Bichintaya Consider me like a particle of dust at your lotus feet. That means the devotees hankering for even the slightest atomic presence in that higher realm. His very, very desperate. If I can just be a speck of dust there at your lotus feet, consider me like that. So this is poetry. The devotee actually, it's not that he's meditating on my sarup will be a speck of dust. Uh, it is the expression of the eagerness at any cost, in any way possible, in it. just accept me. So, in the stages of Nishta, Bruchi, the devotee prays to Krishna and Krishna hears his prayers. Earlier, the devotee may not be fully surrendered. So, if someone is not surrendered, then Krishna does not hear the prayers. Sadanga shanagati hui bejaha 
धारा प्रातानशुनी सी नंद कुमार वन हु हैज टेकन फुल शेल्टर ऑफ श्री कृष्णा बाय द सिक्स अंगस ऑफ भक्ति व्हेन ही प्रेस द सन ऑफ नंद महाराज हिज इज प्रेस नॉट परमात्मा द सन ऑफ नंद महाराज सो दिस इज वेरी अस्टोनिशिंग थिंग बिकॉज वी नो दैट भगवान लोट नारायण ही इज omniscient is sarvagya krishna in vrindavan is nanda tanuja this boy is the son of nanda and yashoda so he cannot be omniscient and have that abhiman at the same time because coward boys are not omniscient <laughs> otherwise how could his friends play tricks on him and jokes and how could the gopis trick him if he knew everything that will happen next so if you are omniscient you know everything that happens next you cannot even have any fun at all playing any game sometimes radha krishna play chess if you are omniscient you then you know the next move of the next person you always play <laughs> so to have fun playing games you have to not know what's happening in the next second <laughs> when radhika disappears from the raslila krishna searching where is she where if you were up this and she said oh i know exactly where she is <laughs> then there would be no emotion at all so being mugda mugda is bewildered like a human being you just don't know what will happen in the next sec- second this is an essential part of the personality of krishna in his vrindavan leela without it he cannot relish his pastimes but at the same time if that very sweet human like vrindavan krishna is the object of our prayers in this world if he is only mugda then when we pray he won't hear anything because we are here and he is there so just as as we we discussed previously agadamana yashoda nanda sona when the coward boys the friends of krishna went into agasur krishna tried to stop them but he could not stop them so he was crying and he was very worried in anxiety but then in order to save his associates yoga maya revealed to him his own sarvagyata and for a moment his omniscience was manifest for the sake of that leela so in the same way though krishna is eternally in galok prandavan mugda but similarly at the same time yoga maya makes him sarvagya when his devotee in this world is praying to him therefore sadan gasha nagati hoi beja tara pratana shuni sri nand kumar that means nand tanuja understand it's very wonderful then you may be wondering well how is that possible how can you be sarvagya all knowing and mugda at the same time that is achintya inconceivable but fortunately see krishna he is imbued with all inconceivable potencies so in one abhiman he is mugda and in another abhiman he is sarvagya and sometimes in the same abhiman he may switch from one to the other it depends on the abhiman so now in when one is just shanagati in the stage of nishta ruchi krishna the son of nanmas he marchi is a prince but he hears hmm, and he is still indecisive about what to do but when the devotee comes to the stage of asakti the abhas of that devotee swarup comes and his relationship with krishna is very thick and when that devotee cries ai nanda tanuja kinkara in great anxiety then krishna also cries in great anxiety for that devotee and krishna's heart really melts when the devotee prays in this stage of asakti 
At the beginning when we had the, all these stages, uh, Ruchi, Vista, Ruchi, Asakti, but it all seems like the same. But when you zoom in, you can see there's a vast world of difference between each specific stage. At first, in the stage of Asakti, the devotees attach to bhajan, to chanting the name, singing, kirtan, the activities of devotional service. But as his realization becomes deeper, he becomes prominently attached to bhajaniya, the object of his bhajan. Krishna, that person. Because Krishna is in sport, is reciprocating with him from time to time. Now, Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur is giving some praman for this stage of asakti. From Srimad Bhagavatam, Sutta Goswami is describing to Shonikarishi and the sages of Naimi Sharanya in the second chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, first chapter. Srinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Sravana Kirtana Hridyanta Stohya Bhattani Vithuno Tisuritsatam. A living entity went to a holy place and there he met a sadhu. Sadhu was speaking something and that person was listening but it was all like Chinese, he could not understand what he was talking about. But somehow or other he liked it. So he thought Oh, this sadhu is just hearing, chanting, remembering all the time. He never cares about anything. Perhaps I could bring him some milk. So then he went and bought some milk in a clay pot. And then he came to that sadhu and said, Oh, please accept this. And the sadhu accepted. So he began his service. By serving a sadhu, then one becomes blessed with an interest in Harikata. Now he started to serve. He's sitting down and listening. And it begins to make sense miraculously. And very much wants to hear. At that time, Srinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Sravana Kirtana. By, simply by listening, he is getting Punya. That means transcendental impressions, some scars which are changing his life. How is it happening? Because this Harikata is not just a conversation. It is Krishna himself in the form of Shabda Brahma, transcendental sound. And just as, let's say, a friend goes to your house, but you are not in. So, he's knocking, no one answers. But he's your friend, so he just checks the door. Oh, it's open. So he goes in anyway. <laughs> then he gets into your house. <laughs> you are not around, but he looks around, and it's quite messy. <laughs> so if someone who's not your friend comes in your house and it's messy, they'll just think, oh, this is chaotic place, and they may leave. But if a friend comes there, then they'll just say, oh, let me tidy you. And they immediately begin to put things away, fold things, sweep. Yeah? Because it's your friend. They don't feel any hesitation. And then, when they've made everything clear, they can sit down there. So in the same way, with the naughty Surit Satam, because Krishna is the friend of the devotee, Without permission, he goes in the ear, in the form of Shabda Brahma. He gets into your heart, he looks around, oh, what a mess. <laughs> and then Krishna himself starts sweeping up. <laughs> and you can feel how your heart is becoming purified. All the things that you attached to and you liked before, which were very tamasic and rajasic, all become disgusting. You don't want to have anything to do with them. And the people of that level of vibrational energy, you don't want to associate with them. 
Because her heart is becoming clean. He's cleaning what? Abhadrani. Abhadrani especially means the anathas, worldly desires, but especially Nama Aparad. Nasta Prayeshu, Abhadreshu, Nittam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavad Yutma Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki. Now you start hearing. Krishna Kata, especially Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> like in Bhajan Rasa Srila Bhagavatam, many, many, most of the verses actually from Srimad Bhagavatam. So you are hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. So that is serving the book Bhagavat. Here the word Bhagavat means two types. The book and the person Bhagavat. The Vaishnava, who is the walking, talking, breathing, singing, dancing embodiment of Srimad Bhagavatam. All the verses of Srimad Bhagavatam are living in his throat and just they cannot wait to jump out. Such a Vaishnava realizes the divine position of Srimad Bhagavatam. Oh, Vrindavan is there, Jumuna, Giraj, Govada. Nanda, Yashoda, Lalita, Vishaka, Radha and Krishna. This is Bhagavatam, all are there. So the devotee who has realized that, that Bhagavatam is not a book, it is Krishna Swarup. Krishna Bhakti Rasa Swarup, Sri Bhagavata, Sarava Veda, Shastra Vaiti, Parama Mahatva. Srimad Bhagavatam is the embodiment of all Krishna Bhakti Rasa. So it is the superior, it is the highest of all Vedic literatures. So that Vaishnava, serving him and hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, what happens? Nashta Praeshu Badreshu, the Nama Parads, which are blocking our experience of the inconceivable power of the Holy Name, these are cleansed away. Deeply, if you hear Srimad Bhagavatam, each story of Srimad Bhagavatam is resolving one or more problems that we have, which is blocking our access to the experience of the Holy Name. Sometimes we we make offense to a devotee. It makes a block to our Holy Name. So, you can see the history of Subhadi Rishi. You can see the history of um, Daksha Maharaj who made offense to Lord Shiva. What happened to him? So, in this way, the stories of Srimad Bhagavatam, by hearing them, the, the blocks, the uh, Nama Parads are here, Nashta Prashu, almost, not completely destroyed, but almost completely destroyed. And when they've almost gone, then Bhagavati Uttamas Loke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki, the Chitta becomes Chitta Ikagra, one pointed, and the devotee is situated in Nishta. Then, when the devotee is steady, the next verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Tadara Jastumu Bhava Kamala Bhadi Aste Chaita Eta Anavitam Stitam Sattvi Prasidati. The meaning is, as soon as the devotee is steady, then the effects of tamas and rajas, they subside, they go down, down, down. This indicates the stage of ruchi. In nishta, one is steady in his practice, but internally he is still harassed by some impressions of tamas and rajas. So, while the person is still internally harassed, the heart is not fully peaceful. And unless the heart is fully peaceful, then one cannot truly taste the sweetness of bhakti. So, tadara jastama bhava kamala bhadiyaste By practicing bhakti in the stage of nishta steadiness, then this internal disturbance goes down. And sthitam sattve prasedati. Here, sthitam sattve prasedati means that devotee's consciousness becomes sthita, situated in the 
Vishuddha Sattva Swaroop of Krishna. Naturally, Swarasiki. He's thinking of the beautiful form of Krishna and preceded him. He becomes satisfied and peaceful. Then Evam Prasanna Manaso. Then after that path comes. But now, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has just given this verse up to Asakti because this is the chapter, fifth chapter, is on Asakti. Now, how is that devotee? What is his mood in relationship to life, practically? So in the third verse, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur gives another verse of Srimad Bhagavata, spoken by Lord Brahma. Tate no kampa susamikshamano bunjana evat matkritam vipakam vidvar babubi vidadam namaste jivet yomu tipade sadayabak. This is a very important verse. My good dad used to say, Look, if you can remember anything, <laughs> then if, just learn four verses. One, Bacho Vigam Manasukam. Control your urges. <laughs> then two, Anya Bilasta Shunyam. The definition of pure bhakti. Then three. Trinada peace will he chena. Be more humble than a blade of grass. And then this one. So if your hard drive only has space for four verses, <laughs> then at least they should be there. Look, Brahma, he's saying, praying to see Krishna. Your devotee. That means he looks at everything in a beautiful way. Samikshamano. He's looking at everything. Su in a beautiful way. What is that beautiful vision with which he beholds all things? Oh, it is all your mercy, Krishna. Everything is your mercy. Bunjan eva maktam vipakam vipak means the maturity. The maturity of what? Atmakritam. The activities I have done myself. Whatever is coming to me in my life is the maturity, the fruit, the reaction of what I have done myself. And therefore, there's no one to blame for anything. Even if a person is in front of you, beating you, they are not to blame. This beating is your own beating. You have done some activity in the past. You have written a letter. I want to be beaten. Put it in the post, write around, and now you have received it. It came back to you. You put it in the post with your own address. <laughs> so life is like this. Whatever you do, that means you are putting that activity in the post with your own address. Whatever you do to others, you go around one day. Ding dong. <laughs> Mail delivery. <laughs> Every difficulty that you have given to someone will come in the mail to you. So that is the vipak. Atma kritam kritam vipaka. But the devotee thinks that Krishna is so kind that He is giving me the reactions of my past life, not fully, only like a token, eh, to purify me, to make me become humble. Therefore, everything is Krishna's mercy. Everything. He thinks, if in my life there's some success and happiness, it came only from bhakti. And whatever suffering is coming to me, Krishna is giving me that because I made some offenses. So it is to make me become cautious, alert, aware that I should not make more offenses. The devotee thinks, 
Oh my lord, I am just like a foolish child. I don't know what's good for me. So whatever is happening in my life, you have arranged it. In the same way, as a loving father arranges everything for his son. The son doesn't know what to do, where to go, how things are happening. The father arranges everything for his little boy. And sometimes the father gives him very fragrant, sweet milk. And sometimes the father says, you have to drink this neem juice. <laughs> and the boy says, ah. bitter and disgusting. But anyway, the child accepts it because my father loves me and he's doing everything for my benefit. Sometimes the father caresses his son and sometimes the father gives him a good beating. But in any situation, everything the father does is good for the child. So, actually, Pritu Maharaj, also in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, he prays like this. He said, Oh my Lord, just as a father arranges everything for the child, so simply, I am a fool, I don't know what is good for me or bad for me. I am just surrendered to you and I accept everything that happens to be your arrangement for my benefit. So this is called Su Samik Shamano. He has a beautiful vision of life. Can you have that vision of life? Hmm? Try. Try. But when you're in this stage of Asakti, then you it will be very nice. So Ribaba Pubiva the Dan Namaste. Having that beautiful vision in all situations, in success and failure, in loss and gain, in victory and defeat, that devotee, Ridvag Vapubi, by his heart, by his words, and by his body, he is bowing down, serving and glorifying Sri Krishna. And for that person, Jiveta Yo Mukti Padesa Dayapak. He becomes the bhak, the recipient, like the the heir, the, like the heir to a throne or the heir to a fortune. You know, if your father is a multi-billionaire and he has written in his will, you will inherit all my money when you are 27. There's some condition. <laughs> So all you have to do to receive that treasure is you just have to live. That's all you have to just live. So Jiveti O Mukti Padei Sadayabhag, if that devotee has this vision of seeing everything, beautiful vision, all is Krishna's mercy, continually serving with body, mind and words, then he will inherit the greatest treasure. See Krishna's lotus feet. That treasure will become his property. All he has to do is just live. So, Jiveta, living. Living is not something that everyone can do. They can do, but they don't. They don't do it. Why? Because those souls who are not living for Krishna, they are not really living. They are like walking corpses. Like zombie apocalypse. Eh? <laughs> Only dead bodies run walking here and there. Bhagavad Bhakti Hina Sya Jati Shasya Japastapa Pranit Syasya Dehasya Mandanam Lokaranjanam In scripture he said that if a person is devoid of bhakti, devotion to Sri Krishna, then Jati Shastra, Japastapa, all of his um, status in society from his high birth, his rank, Shastra, all of his knowledge of the scripture, Japa, all of his chanting of mantras, Tapa, all of his austerity, this is all like decoration on a dead body. When someone dies, then they put them in the, co the coffin and all the relatives come. Uh, but in the funeral parlor, then they put on his watch and his, uh, put some makeup on the face, everything. Uh, they put all the decorations on the dead body. What is the use of this? 
So all of our material qualifications, they're like decorations on a dead body. We're not truly alive. Shukadev Goswami Pai said, that person who does not spend his days absorbed in the service of Krishna, his breathing is like the breathing of the blacksmith's bellows. You know the blacksmith to make his... Understand blacksmith? The who works with iron. <coughs> making horseshoes and everything. With that. Uh, so to make his fire very hot, he has these bellows and puts them out. And he pulls them out, that means they're breathing. And then he... And he blows it and makes the fire. Uh, become roaring. So... Those bellows, they also breathe in and breathe out, but they are dead. They have no life. So just because someone is breathing, does not mean that they are alive. No. If someone is not serving Krishna, they are breathing. But their breathing is like the bellows of the blacksmith. They are walking dead body. So, jiveta yo mukti pade sadai bhak. Be alive. That means... Spend your life serving Krishna and then you just have to wait and very soon you will inherit the greatest treasure of all. Direct service to Charles Hunters, Rajandananda, Radha Kanta, Gopinath, Sri Krishna. So, quite amazing. So, then, let's see. Now we come. Chapter 5, we come to verse, uh, the sixth verse of this chapter. Srila Bhaktinotako is giving another beautiful verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. Spoken by Vritrasur, the demon. Vritrasur. But actually, he wasn't really a demon. He was actually a great devotee. So don't say Vritrasur, say Mahatma Vritra. <laughs> the great soul of Ritra. So, Aham Harita Vapadai Kamula Dasanu Daso Bhavitas Mibuya Manas Marita Supate Gunangste Grinita Vakarma Karo Tukaya. He said, May I again become the servant of the servant of your servant of your lotus feet. Then Manas Meritasupate O Asupate that means Pranapati Prananath. O oh Lord of my life, then my mind will be able to remember your qualities. My voice, Grinitavak, will be able to sing about your qualities, Karma Karo Tukaya, and my body can be engaged in your service. The context of this verse is very significant. Perhaps you know that Vitrasura in his previous life was who? Chittaketu Maharaj. So Chittaketu Maharaj, he had the, the association. Yadrichaya, by his causes, independent mercy, Narad Muni was wondering and he came to the palace of Chittaketu Maharaj. Chittaketu Maharaj was very, very attached. He married thousands and thousands of queens. But not one of them could give him a son. And he was very sad for this. So one day, actually first, Angira Rishi came to him. And then later he came with Narad. Anyway, by their mercy, he got a son. But this son was poisoned by the other co-wives who became jealous. And then he was crying so much. Then Angira came and Narad came. And Narad called that soul who came back into the body of the boy. And then Narad said, go to your parents. 
pacify them. They are weeping. Your mother and father are weeping. The boy opened his eyes and sat up. I have had thousands of lifetimes. And in those thousands of lifetimes, I had thousands of parents. And uh, in which lifetime were these my parents? He said, <coughs> just like a gold coin is in someone's pocket. Like my gold coin. <laughs> then when they need to buy something, then they pay for it with the gold coin, and they buy something, and they forget about the gold coin. Now the other person receives a my gold coin. <laughs> so in this way, the gold coin is going from pocket to pocket. And in each pocket, each person just thinks, oh, my gold coin. But then they spend it, and they forget about it. So in the same way, I am like that. I am born in one family. Oh, my son, we love you. Huh? And then when I die, I go to another family. And this family, huh? even if I'm born next door, but they don't care about me. Right? Huh? But now they love, oh, my son. Now they become covetous of the gold coin. It's like this. So have no, all our relationships are not real. They're not, it's just moha, bewilderment. So when the boy was speaking like this, then with the taking permission of Narad, then he left. And Chichaketu Maharaj, he was freed from his bewilderment. And he was initiated by Narad, and he became a great devotee. But one day, he wanted to joke with Lord Shiva, but the wife of Lord Shiva, Parvati, she took offense and cursed him to become a demon. So in his le next life he became Vritrasur, a huge, powerful demon, very Rajasic. But in his heart he was that devotee from before, now just apparently undergoing some reaction for making an offense. When we make some offense, first of all, whatever progress we make in bhakti, it is there, when we make offense, it's covered over. And then the devotee has to suffer, maybe many lifetimes even, may become a demon even. It's illustrated in this pastime. And when they've suffered so much, and then the reaction of the offense wears off, then their previous devotion comes out again. Because the bhakti lata beach, the seed of devotion that comes from a sadhu, is indestructible. But it can be covered. But it will not be destroyed. So, in his next life he became a demon. And he was in a big battle against the demigods. And Indra fought with him using the thunderbolt weapon, Vajra weapon. And by the Vajra weapon, he cut off the arms of Ritrasur. And then he started cutting off the head of Ritrasur. And he was so big, even the Vajra will take one year to cut off his head. So when Ritrasur was lying on the battlefield, mortally wounded and about to leave this world, then he was crying and calling out to the Supreme Lord. And he spoke four verses which are extremely beautiful. All devotees can learn them. They're very helpful for Bhajan. And this is the first of those four verses. This prayer is Jivana Sandho. It is in the it is this prayer is coming from the junction between life and death. So we should always pray like this. My Gurudev say, said, Bhajan takes place in Jivana Sandhi, in the junction between life and death. If you're thinking, uh, I'm going to live for so many years, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, but I'll really, really chant seriously later, when it's, it's more necessary, when it's absolutely necessary, when it's all over, game over, I cannot play around and do any nonsense anymore, I'm going to die, then I'll be serious. 
No. One has to have this mood, like Virtusor. Now. Because we have no guarantee when we will die. We can die today. No one knows. So always we should pray in this intense mood like Vritra, like Mahatma Vritra. Aham hare tava padaika mula dasanu daso bhavitas vibhuya. Will I again become the servant of your servant of your servant? Why? He's remembering that in my previous life I met a great Vaishnava. So now I'm going to die, I'm going to go to another life. Will I again in that life? All I want is to meet a great Vaishnava again and become the servant of the servant of your servant. It's a very pathetic prayer. Why? Manas pratas patea gunang stay ganita vakkarama karotkaya Because then my mind will be able to remember you, my voice will be able to glorify you and my body will be able to be engaged in your service. The implication is that without sadhu sangha we have no power to do these things. If you don't associate with pure devotees, then your mind will wander into the mundane things. And when we have the company of pure devotees, then we are become empowered. Bhajanurajita satjana sangha pati, every morning we say. The Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sotakur was the Sabapati, like the chairman of the assembly of persons who are empowered to do bhajan. So for the mind to be absorbed in remembrance of Krishna is not an ordinary thing. Without Sadhu Sangha it's not possible. And if we have Asat Sangha, then whatever memory of Krishna we have also will gradually fade to nothing. Even a pure devotee cannot remember Krishna in Asat Sangha. That's why they run away from it. Because their love for Krishna is so sweet and tender in the presence of a person who doesn't feel love for Krishna, they feel shy to even remember him. Understand? That's why, that's why it's the symptom of a pure Vaishnava. They avoid worldly association. Because even though they're not speaking and the thought is in their heart, it's very secret. But they feel shy to even have secret thoughts in that type of presence. So it is essential to be in Sadhu Sangha. And Vikrasur is praying for that. By Sadhu Sangha, my mind will be absorbed, my words will be absorbed, and my body will be absorbed in service. Now, Vitrasura, he didn't really become a demon because of an offense. That's just the outer teaching of the story to us. Don't make an offense, otherwise you will become a demon. But for him, it was something special, a special case. You see, Chittaketu Maharaj had a very long life in heaven and he was flying here and there on his Viman airplanes. He had thousands of wives, very beautiful heavenly damsels and he was enjoying his, that situation like, you know, Pundarik Vidyanidhi. Pundarik Vidyanidhi was a great Vaishnava but outwardly he was kind of living the, a luxurious life, mm, extravagant life outwardly. He looked like a sensitive, but actually he was a great devotee. So, Chitu Ketu Maharaj was like, outwardly he looked like he was having an extravagant life, but inwardly he was very devoted. But the problem was this, he will live for a very long time in those heavenly planets. And his love was very intense, that Krishna was feeling separation for him. So Krishna was thinking, oh, I cannot wait until he finishes this long life in heaven for him to come. I have to make some trick to bring him to my lotus feet at once. So then he arranged this bewilderment of poverty who would curse him and then he would fall, quickly become as a demon, fully grown, fully grown from the fire of Twasta, the, the Yajna. 
of trust. And then, uh, at once he would go to battle with Indra and get killed and then come to Krishna. So the inner meaning of this Leela is Krishna's deep love for his devotee. He could not wait for Chittuketu Maharaj to come, so he quickly made a, what looks like a disaster and brought him to his lotus feet. So, then, come to verse 10. Uh -huh. Here, Srila Bhakti Thakur is quoting from the Swankal, Swasankalpa Prakash Dotra of our Prayojan Acharya Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. Anaraja Radha Padambu Jorinum Anasritya Brindati Vitat Padankam Asambhasya Tadbhava Gambira Chittan Kuta Shama Sindura Sasyava Gaha <coughs> How can a person become immersed in the ocean of Shama Rasa? The romantic mood of transcendental Vrindavan. There are three conditions. Anaraja Radha Padamboja Reno. If a person will not worship the dust of the feet of Radhika. Anasritta Brindati Vitat Patankam. If a person will not take shelter of the forest of Brindavan, which is decorated by her footprints. Asambhasya Tat Bhava Gambira And if a person will not engage in conversation, samvad, discussion, with a pure Vaishnava, Tat Bhava Gambira Chitan, whose chitta is deeply, deeply absorbed in the service of Shilati Radhika. Then, that person who does not meet these three requirements, then for him, Kuta Shamasin, where is the ocean of Shama Rasa, Madhu Rasa? He does not know even in which direction to make his first step to approach that ocean. It is impossible without these three uh, conditions. So here, specifically, the necessity of taking shelter of Sumati Radhika has been expressed. Why? In the stage of Nishta, the devotee will begin to realize something of Krishna's form and qualities in Ruchi, Krishna's Mahadurya sweetness and associates. And then in Asakti, the devotee takes complete shelter of the lotus feet of Radhika. So now in this chapter, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur will start to present many verses of Acharyas expressing their one-pointed attachment to Srimati Radhika. And by taking full shelter of the lotus feet of Radhika, then the Sadak's own Swarup will manifest. So now, come to uh, 16. Radha Nama Sudara Samra Saitam Jeevas to me vive love Paro Tapada Tankit Tankita Sucharitam Brinda Ravivi Tisu Tat Karmaiva Karakoro to read the young Tasya Padam Jayatam Tad Babut Savataparam Baba to me Tat Prana Nate Rati This is uh, from C. Radharasa Sudaniti composed by Srila Prabodha Ananda Saraswati. He's saying, 
just the translation. Rather now, Sudarasa, may my tongue be overwhelmed with the sweet rasa of Radhana. Paro tat padakam kitasu charitam brindata vivitishu. May my feet wander through the places of Brindavan which are marked with her footprints, like Seva Kunj, Adir Samir, Vangsibart, Jamuna Tat, Tat Karmaeva Kara Karoti. May my hands be engaged in radical service. Mridayam tasya padam jayatam and may my heart be absorbed in meditation on her lotus feet. Tat bhavat svata param bhavatavde tat prananate irati and by this bhavutsava festival of transcendental loving emotions then may I attain rati love for her prananath. So this is the translation of the verse. Now the deep meaning. Srila Prabodhananda Saswati is staying in Vrindavan. Sometimes at on the bank of Lukluki Kund in Kamyavan. Sometimes at Kalyadaha on the bank of Jamuna in Vrindavan. He is actually Samadhi is there. He is eternally there now doing Raja at Kalyada. And he is so absorbed in the nectar of Vrindavan Leela. He is writing 10,000 verses just glorifying Vrindavan. Oh my dear friend, leave everything and come to Vrindavan. Don't worry about anything. If you are old, if you are poor, if you are sick, if no one loves you, if you are alone, abandoned and suffering so much, when you are in Vrindavan, your life is successful. <laughs> He's glorifying Vrindavan so much and writing hundreds of verses glorifying Shimati Radhika. So one day he was writing and Krishna came. Oh, here's one sadhu. Let me see what he's writing. So Krishna came there and looked over his shoulder and saw he's writing one verse about Radhika, another verse about Radhika, another verse about Radhika. <laughs> Krishna said, Hey Baba, can you write a verse about me? <laughs> So then, Prabhupada Nanda Sarasad Thakur, he said, all right. Radha Nama Sudara Samrasaitam Jeevastuve Vivala. And he wrote this verse. <laughs> May my tongue always chant the name of Radha. Why? Who is Simati Radhika? Ladi nira sara prem prema sara bhav bhava parama kasta nam mahabhav mahabhava swarupa sri radha takurani sarabhaguna kani krishna kata shiravani Krishna's own swarup is satchidananda this ananda in Krishna manifests outside as bhakti the Ladini Shakti, his pleasure, the potency that gives pleasure to him. And that Bhakti develops Prem, Sneha, Man, Pranaya, Rag, Bhav, Mahabhav, up to Rudha, Adi Rudha, Mohan, Modan, Madanakya Mahabhav, to the highest point. So Mahabhava Swarupa Sri Radha Thakurani, 
the embodiment of Mother Lakya Mahabhav, the highest love. It has a form, and that is Srimati Radhika. She is made of love from head to toe, everywhere. It's amazing. The bodies of Krishna's associates are coming from Sandini Shakti. And within those bodies of Sandini Shakti, the Sambitan Ladini is moving in their minds, in their senses. But when Prem develops up to Anurag and then goes to the next level, Mahabhava Surupasvi Swasarupam Mano Nayat Varamrita Surupasri Swasarupam Mano Nayat it means that the chittabriti, the movements of the pran in the transcendental associates, when they come in Mahabhav, it completely takes over the entire mind, everything. And now their mind becomes completely one with the nature of brain. And because the mind is the chief of all the senses, then they, that vritti then goes through all their senses and the bodies of the gopis become completely Mahabha, one with the nature of Mahabha, that is called Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pati Bhavita Bhavita means that if an Ayurvedic doctor is making a medicine from Amala then he can take amla powder and then he soaks the amla powder in amla juice. And when the amla powder becomes soaked in the amla juice, then uh, the medicine becomes extremely strong, very, very powerful. So uh, that is called uh, Swabhavana. It is soaked in itself. Again and, and then they do it again and again. That is called Bahu Swabhavana. And he keeps soaking that powder again in the amla powder, in the amla juice, and it soaks it up, and then it dries, and then he again soaks it, and again, that is called Bahu Swabhavana. And when this has been done many times, until that amla powder comes to maximum potency, now it's called Bhavita. So, Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Prati Bhavita. The Braj Gopis, they're not only body of Sandini with some uh, Bhakti Shakti, Ladini moving in them, but they are Bhavita, completely from head to toe, everything has become absolutely one with Ladini Shakti in the state of Mahabhav. And this is why, if any elderly gopi, she makes some Makan, some butter. Krishna wants to taste it. But what he is really tasting is her love in her heart. He wants to taste the love in the heart of the devotee. He wants to exchange emotion with the devotee. But the gopis, their love in their heart has become, shh, their whole body is made of that love. So Krishna wants to taste their bodies. This is what is called Madhur Rasa. Kanta Bhavani Janga Diya Karina Sevan, the speciality of Madhuri Rasa. It's the only Rasa where the devotee serves Krishna with the body. So the, the gopis are completely Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Prati Bhavita. Varamrita, the highest nectar, Varamrita Srupa Sri Swasarupam Mano Nayat. First, their minds. From Anurag they go to Mahabhav, their minds become completely one with Mahabhav and then the Pran through the Sattvic Bhavs spread everywhere. Because the symptom of Mahabhav is Anuraga Sosambedya. Anurag goes to its highest point, Sosambedya Dasha. Dasam Swap, Prakashita. And then Prakashita means that Swarup Shakti spreads all over the body and they have all eight Sattvic Bhavs at the same time. 
So, uh, this is Radhika, Uddipta and Sudipta, all eight Sattvic Bhavs and multiplied a thousand times over in potency. So this is the Swarupa of Radhika. Don't think Radhika is like some worldly woman. Don't even think she's like a woman of heaven. Don't even compare to her to Sachi Lachmi Sati Sobhagya Boloni. Don't compare her to Rati, the wife of Kamadev, the god of love. Don't compare her to Gauri, the wife of Lord Shiva. Ratim Gauri Lilay. Don't compare her even to Lakshmi. Lakshmi Devi is not Mahabhav Swarup. Lakshmi Devi is not Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pati No. Don't compare. Don't compare her to Satyabhama even. Satyabhama does not have Mahabhav. Sometimes the queens of Dwarka, they look at Krishna and move their eyebrows with a twinkle in their eye, and Krishna ignores them. If Radhika will do that, Krishna will drop his flute and faint. Actually, the verse is in this chapter. It's in this chapter 5. When Radhika just, by the arrow of her glance, Krishna drops. Why? The gopis are in a completely different category. That is why we sang this song today, Ramani Shri Ramani. It is based on the verse of Tinguri Lilay. <coughs> when, especially Rudha, especially Adi Rudha which is present in Radhika's group, it diminishes the qualities of all other goddesses, including Lakshmi and the queens of Dwarka, they're becoming insignificant in the presence of Adi Rudha And Radhika is the highest development of that mother. Mm -hmm. So, Radha Nama Sudhara Sam Rasayitam Jeevastume Vivalo As Krishna is non-different from his name, that Mahabhav Surup Radhika is also non-different from her name. One day, Jyotila was keeping Radhika in her home. She could not get out. It was very tight security. Sri Krishna was in the forest and he was in a fever of separation. He cannot live without Radhika. Understand? Because Sri Krishna, he reciprocates with everyone. When Krishna approaches someone, what kind of love they have, he manifests an equal level of love to reciprocate with them. So that means when he's with a friend, his friendly mood comes. If he's with a parent, he's the Vatsalya, he experiences Vatsaras and becomes a child. But for him to experience the highest frame, he has to be with Radhika. Unless he's face to face with her, he cannot discover his own loving experience. It will not come. Even if he's with another devotee, another gopi, then Mahabhav will come, but not Madan of Radhika. So when Krishna is in separation, or he's in a fever, dreaming of Radhika, when will I meet? And he fainted. <laughs> Madhu Manga was trying to revive him. Krishna is looking around. Oh, Radhika, what will I do? Then Madhu Manga thought, this is a very serious situation. Let me try to help. So then Madhu Manga set off, he went to Yavat. When he got to Yavat, he was looking around, but Jotila had very tight security. He could not get to Radhika and he could not help Radhika escape. So then Madhu Manga thought, what will I do? So then he took a lotus leaf and then he wrote Radha, two syllables, Radha on the lotus leaf, and then he folded it up. And then he came back and said, Krishna, accept this. Krishna took the folded up lotus leaf and opened it and saw the two syllables, Radha, and held to his heart. Oh, Madhu Mangal, you have saved my life. <laughs> I am fully satisfied. Uh, you are very kind to me. So, Silapo Bonan Sazoy Thakur is saying, Radha Namo Sudhara Samrasaita. 
How? In the name Radha, she Mahabhav Swarupini, she becomes fully present. So may my tongue be overwhelmed with relishing the rasa of Radhika's name. Padu tatpada kang itasu charitam brindata vivi. May my feet wander through her Vrindavan, which is marked with her footprints. Vrindavan. Aniraritoyama mora mana brindama mana mani eka kori jani. Radharani said, Vrindavan is my heart. It is one with my heart. So Vrindavan is not an ordinary place. It is an extraordinary place. Vibrajati laka kalinda taniyani roga nilam baro danchat kancha champaka cham danchat kanchana champaka charivaho nana rasullasini Krishna prema payoda reina rasadena dyanta sammohini Gopendatma Dravallaba Radheva Brindatavi Prabhupada Nanda Sazwa Thakura said when Sri Krishna enters into the forest of Vrindavan then he sees oh the uh, teal flowers and he is reminded of the tilaka of Radhika he sees the dark blue waves of the Jamuna. And seeing that, he has a sporty of Radhika's blue cloth. He sees the golden champak vines. And then he has a sporty of Radhika's beautiful golden complexion. Nana Rasulasini. And becomes overjoyed. He sees the dark rain clouds gathering in the sky. And he remembers her hair. When it comes open from the braid, it's like a big mass of curls. Krishna Prema Payoda Rina Rasadena. And when he sees the waterfalls coming over the rocks, he remembers the perspiration running down the body of Radhika. Everywhere he looks, he sees Radhika. Vijayasthi Radhiva Brinda, all glories to this forest of Vrindavan. It is Radhika herself in another form. Thakkai Mahav Karakar Otu Vidayam. May my hands be engaged in her service. Ridayam Tasya Padam Dhyayata. And may my mind meditate on her lotus feet. Thakpa Vutsvata Parambhava Prananā Tevati. And then. Remember, Krishna said, hey, write something about me. <laughs> so then in the last line, Tat Pranana Teriti, and by de being dedicated to Radhika, automatically, then I'll have love for you. <laughs> <laughs> no need to make any extraneous endeavor. Just be dedicated to Radhika, because she's the embodiment of love for Krishna. <laughs> so, Sila Rupa Goswami part, he said, Mm. Karanam muhur atay param tava brindavana chakravatini abhikeshi ripayorya yavavetsa chatupratanu bhajanam jana. Rupa Goswami was offering prayers to Radhika, glorifying her sweetly from head to toe, every aspect of her beauty. And Radhika appeared and said, Oh, I'll give you a benediction, what do you want? Our Rupa Goswami never wants anything from Radhika. Only her service. But if you ask for a benediction, you ask for a benediction that will make Radhika happy. So then he said, Karna Moho Ate Param. Oh Radhika, Oh Vrindavana Chakravartini. Chakravarti is the center of the wheel. That means you are like the center of the wheel of Braja. Everything is revolving around you, including Krishna. You are the center of everything in Vrindavan. Oh, Vrindavan Chakravartini Radhika, if you want to give me a benediction, then give me this benediction. That if Krishna wants to meet with you, he cannot meet with you without coming 
and taking permission from me first. So if you have an important person, you just can't show up. You have to make an appointment with their secretary and then you see their assistant and then you can... So when Radhika heard this, yes, of course, that does do. Yeah. Krishna should not come directly to me. He may take me for granted. First you'll have to come to my maidservant and beg permission. And when he comes to ask permission, I'll say, no. <laughs> and then, just as I have glorified you from head to toe, Krishna will have to glorify me also in the same way to try to persuade me to change my mind that I'll arrange that he can meet with you. Radharani, yes, yes, Tatastha. <laughs> the delay will increase his eagerness. <laughs> so, Tat Prana Nate Rati. Love has two sides. So, the psychology here that Srila Prabhupada Nanda Sarasvati Thakur is expressing is that if someone is dear to Radhika, then Krishna automatically loves that person. If you try to love Krishna, you have a little love. And he'll love you the same amount. Because he reciprocates with everyone. But if you are dear to Radhika, then, oh, Krishna will have more, more and more love. And your love, being in the shelter of the embodiment of love for Krishna, you will have more love also for Krishna. And then, reciprocate. So, now come 16. Uh, eight, verse 18 I'm just touching 18, very important verse Padam joyas tababina varadasya meva nanyat kadabi samaye kila devi ache sakyaya tema manamostu namostu nityam tasyaya tema marasostu rasostu sanjaya Sri Raghunath Daska Swami in Sri Vilap Kusumanjali he's praying to Radhika. Now remember, this is the fifth chapter, Asakti. The devotee takes one pointed shelter of Radhika and by this his Suru begins to manifest. O Devi, Devi Kohi, Jyotamana Paramasundari Kimba Krishna Puja Krida Pasatit Nagari. The word Devi means supremely beautiful, effulgent, and Divdatu means playful and uh, worshipable. So, just as a person goes to one like park to play, or they go to a holy place to worship. So Radhika, her whole Swarup, is the place where Krishna goes for his play and his worship to, together. This is the meaning of Devi. Kimba Krishna Puja Krida Vasati Nagari. Radhika is like a town of Krishna's Puja and Krida, play and worship. So, O oh Devi, I have no desire for anything other than the attainment of service to your lotus feet. If Radhika will say, Oh, be my Saki. Then I say, Sakyaya Tema Manamostu Namostu Nityam. I bow down to your Sakis. Lalita Vishaka Chitta Tampaklata. I bow down to them. Eternally. But I don't want to be like them. Really? Isn't that the highest attainment? To be a Saki of Radhika? Raghunath Daska Swami saying, Dasyaya Tema Manamostu Namostu Nitya. My only vow is that I should be fixed in servitude to you, to be your Dasi, and that I may relish. Rasostu, Rasostu. It's mentioned twice. Because when you taste it, then you feel like you haven't tasted it and you try to taste again. And then you feel like you haven't. It's ever fresh. The service is full of anurag. 
So this is my only uh, request. This is my satyam. Means I'm making a vow. I only want to be your dasi. So it's most profound. Radhara Swarup Mahabhav Chintamani Radhara Swarup Lalitari Saki Tarakaya Vyuha Rup Radharani He is like a wish-fulfilling jewel who can fulfill all the wishes of Krishna. And the Sakis, Lalita, Vishak and others, they are her Kaya Vyuha Rup. They are actually her own Fractions of her own mood have manifest murtis. They are the murtis, the deities of the fractions of Radhika's various moods. Someone thinks, oh Lord Ram is great because he's dedicated to only one woman, Sita. <laughs> but this Krishna is dancing with millions of gopis. <laughs> but these millions of gopis are one woman, Radhika. <laughs> But she has manifest all these forms. Without many lovers, the Ras cannot go to Ulas, be fully expanded. Therefore, Radhika has many, many, many forms to make Krishna relish Rasa, and those are the Sakis. So, Sakya Sri Radhikaya Braja Kumada Vidur Ladini Nama Shakte Prima Sarang Sa Balya Kishalaya Dala Pushpari Tulya Satulya Siktanam Krishna Lila Mrita Rasa Nritaya Ula Santya Mamusyam Jatulla Sam Susichat Satgunamadikam Santi Yatan Chitram Nandi Mukhi said, that Radharani is like a wish-fulfilling vine. And this wish-fulfilling vine is very beautiful, beautified by many leaves and sprouts, sprouting buds, flowers and manjaris. So, Radhika is like that creeper and her sakis are like the leaves and flowers and manjaris, the buds on that creeper. So Radhika appears more beautiful surrounded by her entourage of sakis. Krishna is like the moon. So when the moon shines, Amrita comes from the moon and causes the creeper to bloom. But when the Amrita of the moon touches the creeper, then the leaves and flowers and manjuries experience a hundred times more joy than if that nectar had gone directly on them. Firstly. So, Yadhyapi Sakira Krishna Sangam Nahiman. The Sakis, they never desire themselves to meet with Krishna. They only want Radhika to meet with Krishna. Lalita Vishakha They only want Radhika to meet with Krishna. And when Radhika meets with Krishna, then Sprishati Yadima Kundo Radhikam Tatsakinam Bhavati Vapusi Kamba Sweda Groman Chavaspam Adara Sudha Mudasyas Chepidap Teta Yapnad Bhavati Bhatatatasam Matatam Chitrameta. When Krishna touches Radhika, then it's the Sakis who tremble. It's the Sakis who cry. It's the Sakis who burst out in perspiration. And all the subtle bars come in them when Krishna touches Radhika. And when See, Krishna relishes the nectar of Radhika's lips, then all the Sakis become mad. <laughs> they start singing. That's Kirtan, actually. It's actually the meaning of Kirtan. Huh? You've seen the very beautiful painting under Gurudev's guidance, Shamarani Deva, called Kunji Kirtan. Radha Krishna sitting together, and the Sakis are playing Madanga, cartels, and singing. What is this? This is the ecstasy. When Krishna comes close to Radhika, then the ecstasy of Radhika spreads out to the Sakis, they become dead. And it comes out in the form of Sankirtan. So, Vibhura Pisukarupa Swapaka Kashopi Bhava 
Shana mapi nahira da Krishna yo yari teswa. Pravahati rasa pushtim chit vibhuti ivesha. Swayatana padamasam kasakinam rasakya. What person, knowing rasa, rasakya, would not take shelter of these sakis? The embodiments of Radhika's various moods. Yoga's chitta vritti nirodha. Yoga means control your chitta vrittis. But Radhika's eight chitta, main chitta vrittis are her eight sakis. Ramananda Rai explained to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said the eight sakis of Radhika are her main mano vritti or chitta vritti. Embodied. So, Sila Krishna Skaraj Goswami Pad is saying, even though Vibhu Rapi Rupa, even though Radha Krishna's love is Vibhu, vast, incalculable, all pervading, and is Swapakash, self manifest, but still, Shanam Apinahirada Krishna Yo Yariteswa. They cannot experience a happiness for one second without the Sakis. Deliberate. They cannot experience happiness for one second without the Sakis. Why? Pravayati Rasa They are the ones who cause the Ras to flow. They nourish the Ras. They expand the Rasa. They are like, just like in Vaikuntha. Lord Narayan exists surrounded by all of his various mystic potencies. So these gopis, these sakis, they are the mystic potencies of Radha Krishna's love. Hmm? So Chit Bibu Tir Ivesha, just as the Isha, the Supreme Lord Bhagavan in Vaikuntha is surrounded by his Chit Vibhuti, his own the mystic powers. So Radhika is surrounded by the mystic powers of her love. Those are her sakis. So who will not take shelter of those sakis? What do you want in life? Is there anything more than this? Saki bina e lila pushti Saki lila vistariya saki ashwatai It goes around in four stages. You see? If you want to do something, then you have an idea. Oh, I'll do this. But in Radha Krishna's Lila, Radha is very simple. Hmm? The idea, how can we go and meet with Krishna, comes in her Manubriti. Her Manubriti are the Sakis. So they'll come up with the ideas. Oh, Radhika, we have a plan. <laughs> really? What? What do we do? <laughs> She's ready to listen to Lali to give her advice. Lalita will say, if you want to control the mind of Krishna, you should, when you see his friends coming, be very respectful to them. Huh? This is psychology. If, a, if someone has a friend and then sees, oh, one lady is very respectful, then becomes a friend. Be very respectful to his friends. Ne don't put your desire on his desire. Also. Like this, Dalita Saki, she gives advice to Radhika. Don't be submissive to him. Be contrary to him. Listen to my words, Radhika. These are for your benefit. If you want to be happy. So, the Sakis of Radhika, their own Manubritis manifest outside. And they have all the ideas what to do. So they uh, initiate the pastimes. Let's write a letter. Send a letter to Krishna. So they initiate the pastimes and they vistariya, they expand. Once the pastimes are going, they also expand them. Just like in the Madhya Lila in the midday pastimes. That was the previous chapter corresponding to the midday pastimes. There, Radha Krishna, they're throwing color. But Krishna is very strong then. 
He overpowers them. So then they do swinging pastimes. And Krishna makes the swings go so high, Radharani is afraid that she will fall off. And she has to hold on to Krishna. They go in the water and they're splashing water. But Krishna is too powerful. Radharani says to Vishaka, Oh Vishaka, Krishna is winning in all the games. <laughs> because these are power games. And he's very strong. Quickly, think of a game that we can play that requires some brains so that we can dispatch his pride. <laughs> then the leader said, I have an idea. And then she comes with the board games. Ciao, <laughs> And because this board game will require some brains. So now Krishna is becoming proud of winning all the time, but now surely he'll lose. Because he's just a coward boy, he only knows how to hurt cows. <laughs> and everyone becomes like their association. If you associate with cows all day, you cannot be so smart. <laughs> so, Lalita will come with the board game and then sit them down and they'll play dice. Passion Krida. <laughs> And they'll gamble. Oh, let's gamble for our pet deers. Krishna has a pet deer and Radharani has a pet dog. So Madhu Mangal is there. <laughs> He's always laughing. And Radha Krishna throw the dice and move their pieces and Radhika wins. So then Radhika by the glance of her eye, she looks at Rupa Manjari and Rupa Manjari goes to Krishna's side of the board game puts a collar on his deer and takes his deer away. <laughs> <laughs> and looking at Madhu Mangal, where's your hee hee now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll gamble again for our necklaces. <laughs> so then they gamble again and move their pieces and Radharani again wins. Oh. So then Krishna has to hand over to Rupa Manjari his necklace. Huh? And then Radhika puts it on. <laughs> and then Krishna looks and sees his own face reflected on the locket. And seeing his own face reflected on the locket, he becomes bewildered. <gasps> I think that you are the real Krishna and I am your reflection. <laughs> You are Krishna, I am not Krishna, I am just the reflection, you are the real Krishna. And you have obtained Siddhi, perfection. You have obtained Paramgati, your supreme goal. <laughs> Living under just of Radhika. So in this way, uh, the Sakis are making a link. They inspire the pastime and then they make a link from one pastime to another. They nourish the pastimes. Because the Sakis want that Krishna will meet with Radhika. And Radhika wants that the Sakis will meet with Krishna. And when Krishna sees, Anyonye Vishuddha Prem Kori Rasa Pushta Tasabara Prema Deki Krishna Hoi Tushta. When Krishna sees the mutual selfless love between Radhika and her Sakis, then he becomes completely satisfied. So they initiate the pastimes, they make the link from one pastime to another to expand the pastimes. The Sakis the nourish the pastimes and they are the ones who relish the pastimes. And this is why Raghunath Daska Swami is saying Sakyaya Taima Manamostu Namostu Nityam I don't want to be a Saki like Lalita and Vishaka. Let me be a Nitya Saki. Those are Manjuris. They are Dasis of Radhika. They have a junior position. From the perspective of Padmaryada, that is, from the perspective of status, they are in a lower status than the Astasakis. But from the perspective of Seva Sobhagya, the good fortune of their service opportunities. They are more fortunate. Because Lalita and Vishaka being Radhika's contemporaries and her equals, when Radhika meets alone with Krishna, then they'll recede into the distance and go out on the bank of Jamuna beneath the tree and sit down and talk to each other. And Radhika meets secretly in a beautiful Kunjabhavan pavilion in the forest 
But the maid servants, they can stay there. And they can, they can watch. Through the lattice window of the Kunja Bhavan, what is Radha and Krishna doing? How beautiful they looked, like a shining golden mirror and a sapphire, shining sapphire meeting together. Pranayamaya Vayasya Pranayamaya Vayasya Kunjurandra Pitakshi Chititalamanu Labda Nanda Murcham Patanti Pratirata Bidadano Chastita Chitra Chitta Smarani Pritani Kunje Radhika Krishna Chandra When they count and put their eyes against the Jalarandra, the lattice windows, they look inside and they see the beautiful loving meeting of Radha Krishna, how they are joking together, how they are playing together. Then, love Dananda, they get such Ananda that Murchampatanti, that they faint and fall to the ground. They are lying on the ground eh? with eyes not fully open and not closed. They are unconscious but their eyes are <laughs> like this. And they are seeing the Jugal Murti, the form, the beauty of Radha Krishna. They saw that and it was so powerful, so beautiful that they fainted. But the samskar is still there and so they are looking at the samskar of the beauty of Radha Krishna as they lie on the ground. <laughs> So they are very fortunate. So Sila Prabodhananda Saraswati also, he has said, Rata Nagara Keli Sagara Nimagnali Drisham Yatsukam Nota Lesha Lavayati Bhagavata Saravopi Sokyutsavaha Tatrasha Yadikasya Chin Nirupanam Praptasya Bhagya Sriyam Sri Vrindavana Nam Nidhani Parameswi Yam Babur Nasyutu Ah, I just want to die in Vrindavan. <laughs> if I can die in Vrindavan, then my desire can be fulfilled. To be the Dasi of Radhika. To be one of those few and rare persons who are so close to Radha Krishna that I can look through the window of the Kunj and there Radha Nagara Keli Sagara see an ocean of pastimes Keli means loving pastimes Keli Sagara Radha Nagara Radhika and her beloved Keli Sagara hmm? Nimagnali and become sinking into that ocean and the happiness that my eyes will feel at that time. Nemagnali Drisham Yatsukam What type of happiness my eyes will experience at that time? Nota Leisha Lavayate Bhagavata Saravopi Sokyut Sabaha Now imagine, just consider this. Krishna is Bhagavan. He is Satchidananda Ganaha, the condensed form of Supreme Bliss. And he is doing so many pastimes. Huh? And these pastimes huh? give him a festival of joy. Huh? But that festival of joy that is experienced by all the arrangements of Krishna, his Shaktis and his Lila, for see Krishna, that joy cannot, no talashalavayate, cannot be even equal to a tiny drop of the ocean of happiness experienced by the eyes of those Manjuris are looking. Crickets. <laughs> Pin drop silence. Radha Nagara Keli Sagara Nemagnali. Yatal Yatsukam, the happiness that the eyes of those maidservants is like an ocean 
and even the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the origin of all existence. All of his own arrangements for his own happiness do not equal, even equal one drop of the happiness experienced by the eyes of those creatures. So, Sila Pogbo Nadasazo and Tako is saying, Ah, let me just die in Vrindavan, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very merciful. Anar Pita Charin Chirat Kruneya Vatri Naha Kalo Sumar Paitu Munnatu Uchwana Sama Sobhakti. This is what he came to give. It was never given before. <coughs> never given before. It's astonishing. And even we are not touching yet. Because the maid servants of Radha and Krishna, they are not only sometimes looking from through the Jalarandra. Sometimes Radha Krishna are with the Sakis in the Kunj. They're playing various games. And Radha Krishna are laughing and joking. Kunjai prasuna kula kalpita keli talpe sam vistayor madura narma vilasa bhajo loka atraya baraneas taramandajani Samvaha Yeshiti Kada Yuvayo Janoya. Rupa Goswami Pads, when, when will there be a beautiful bed of flower petals, so soft and fragrant? Radha Krishna reclining there, they're laughing and joking with each other. When will I be there at the feet of Radhika and massaging her feet? Very, so close, massaging her. Other maid servants are there. And seeing the brother Krishna eager to enjoy, then they think, oh, we should go. So then they're going. But then Radhika catches Bahuna Kim Sokantena Krida Yantya Latagri He Paryanka Adistapitamba Vastar Vacha Aditam Kochit. Also, hmm? Oh, no, but I should go. Don't worry. Vastradi Chakoti and puts one cloth over. It stays very close on that beautiful uh, uh, bed of flowers where Radha Krishna playing together and staying there. Radhika Chut. Who can imagine? So our Acharyas, Sila Raghunath Daska Swami, Rupa Goswami, Sila Pramod Nanda Sazar Thakur, they have described the great fortune of Radhika's maid servants. So here in this verse, Dasyaya Thaymamar Sostu Rusostu Satyam. Oh, I don't want to be Saki. Lalita and Vishakha are so great. Let me take a lower position and just be your maidservant. Very quiet. Moving around here and there in the background, making arrangements for your beautiful meetings with Sri Krishna. So, here in the fifth chapter of Vajan Rahasya, the devotee has come to the stage of Asakti. And they are realizing the sweetness of Radha and Krishna and taking full shelter with their heart of the lotus feet of Radhika, the devotee Swarup is coming. So just as the Sakis, they are not different from Radhika. So the Swarup that comes is also not different from Radhika. It is a part, not a part of this world or anything. Part of the Advaya Jnana Tattva, of the Supreme Reality. Swabhakti Unnata Ujjvarasam Swabhakti Sriyam a drop of Radhika's love. This love is completely pure. There's no consideration of one's own enjoyment. What to speak of material enjoyment? There's no consideration of even one's spiritual enjoyment. That's how pure it is. See, look, Krishnas Karaj Goswami gives the example. Anga stambaranga utunga yantam praimananda daruko nabhyanandat kamsarate vin jane yena sakshad akshodayan arayato vyadayi. One day, the 
servant of Krishna in Dwarka, Daruka, took a fan and was fanning Krishna. But as he was fanning, he felt such premananda, such joy of love, that he became stunned. His hairs were standing on it and he became stunned and he could not move. And he forgot where he was. And then the next moment when he came back into sense, oh, what am I doing? Oh, I condemn this ecstasy because this ecstasy is getting in the way of my service. I don't want it. <laughs> so, Nija Premanande Krishna Sevananda Bade Sayandera Prati Bhakta Hoi Mahakrodi It means that if the mm, Premananda, the joy of love, will get in the way of Sevananda, the joy of serving, then Sayanandera Prati Bhakta Hoi Mahakrodi The devotee becomes angry with his own Ananda. <laughs> Go away, joy. I don't want any joy. Don't disturb my seva. So, this love is completely pure. No desire at all for one's own uh, pleasure, even spiritual pleasure. Just pure seva. Sri Radha Pada Padma Chavi Madurataya Prima Chitz Jyoti Rei Kambu De Udbhuta Pena Stavaka Mayatanu Saiva Sarva Vaidag Japurna Kaishura Stad Kaishura Stad Bhyandita Stad Ganaruga Pagana Sri Chamatkara Bhajo Devyarankara Vasta Anusara Sasake Radhika Kinkarista this chapter is describing how the Swarup manifests. So what is this Swarup? Sri Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati Thako said, Sri Radha Pada Padma Chavi. The lotus feet of Radhika are effulgent, with spiritual effulgence. Prima Chit Jyoti Rei It is a Prima Chit Jyoti a spiritual light of love and it spreads out and becomes like an ocean. And this ocean of love has huge waves and when waves they rise up and crash then the foam of the ocean goes up into the air. Udbhuta Pena Pena Stabaka so there's like a, there's a, a stabaka means like a group of bubbles which came up from the ocean of the love emanating from the lotus feet of Radhika. So Udbhuta Pena Stabaka Maya Tanu Sarva Vaitakya Purna The Manjari's bodies are made of that form. And being made of the form which has emanated from the crashing waves of the love emanating from the lotus feet of Radhika. They are Sarva Vaidagya Purna. They are replete with all mm, Vaidagda, artistic talents. Mm, singing, dancing, decorating, poetry, all rasa. Mm. Kaishuras, Vyanjitas, Tadgana, Rugopanagana, with beautiful golden complexions, very sweet and young eternally. Divyalankara Vastra, decorated with Radharani's own prasadi ornaments and cloth. Radhika Kinkaristaha, these are the Kinkaris, the maidservants of Radhika, the maidservants of Kinkari Vatsala. Radharani is full of the mood to nourish and protect them, so they are also called Palya Dasis. Palya Dasi Kori Larita Sundari. So, in this stage of Asakti, now the devotee receives such a very beautiful body, and now this can render service. It begins to render service first in the Vrindavan Yoga Beat. 
that is the Bantu, Bantu Pasana Maya Lila, and then it will become the Swarasaki Lila in Astakali Lila. And as he becomes absorbed in that, then Shuddha Sattva Vishesha, until this stage, it was the Abbas. It was Bhav Abbas manifesting all of this. But now Shuddha Sattva Vishesha It was before it was reflected on his Chitta. But now Shuddha Sattva comes and the Chitta melts completely. And he loses awareness of this world and enters into the service in the stage of Bhav. So that's the next chapter. <laughs> After waiting, when I come back. <laughs> from the beginning. Don't start with chapter 5. You have to start with chapter 1. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> nothing will come at all. So, follow chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, like this. Go through Bhajan Rasta, step by step. Actually, these verses, you cannot... Mechanic, you say, oh, now I'll come to this verse. But as you are chanting, the verses and these moods will come to you. Because in Nam Bhajan, we are not Karta, the doer. Nam Prabhu is Karta. So if you just take shelter of Nam with full faith and cry at the lotus feet of Nam Prabhu again and again, chanting one lakh, two lakhs, three lakhs sometimes, <laughs> then all the Nartas will very quickly go away and then these stages will descend. We cannot climb. The mercy has to come down to us.